I wanted to talk about Star Wars. There have been four new Star Wars movies that have come out recently, and I haven't talked about a single one of them yet, so here we go. Star Wars Episode Seven. Finally. Finally time to see Luke and Leia and Han and all they've been up to, but oh wait. Nope. No Luke. Not really. Not till the, uh, just a teeny, teeny bit at the very, very end. Sorry. Sorry you won't be seeing much of Luke this time. Instead, let's follow the oh-so-exciting adventures of Poe Dameron as he goes to some planet that I don't remember the name of to get this map that leads to Luke Skywalker. And you're wondering why Luke Skywalker is just missing or out there somewhere and doesn't want to be seen by anybody, but whatever. So he puts the piece of the map or whatever in his little BB-8 droid and tries to escape, but can't and then tries to shoot at Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren, the brand new bad guy that you've seen all of about two minutes, uses a brand new force power that freezes Poe's blaster fire in midair. I actually thought this was pretty cool. It was the first step towards me actually liking this Kylo Ren character. Oh, and we met this character named Finn who now regrets killing people and is having second thoughts about the First Order. Great. So yada yada yada, a bunch of stuff happens, and let's switch over to another character who is starting up in this movie. On the planet of Tatooine, I mean Jakku, we meet this lovely young girl named Rey, who basically lives in GameStop. She has to junk a bunch of stuff from an old Star Destroyer to make her instant bread. She meets up with BB-8, saving him from, I think, some creatures who are going to sell him or junk him or something. They become the best of friends, and it seems like Ray can understand everything BB-8 is saying. So, switching over yet again, Poe is locked up in this interrogation room or whatever, and Finn decides to break him out so they can steal a TIE fighter and ultimately end up crash landing on Jakku. When they crash, it seems like Poe is dead, even though he's not, and it really doesn't make any sense later on when it's revealed that he's alive, but Finn takes his jacket and carries on alone. Eventually, Finn, BB-8, and Rey all meet up together and have to steal the Millennium Falcon to escape the First Order. They meet up with Han Solo and Chewbacca and yada yada, some more filler stuff happens. Han takes them to some planet so he can meet up with an old friend. It's basically a Cantina 2.0 with another new character, Maz Kanata. Finn decides he doesn't want to stick around anymore and goes off to talk to two guys about running as far away from the First Order as possible. Why would you want me to be invested in this new character when the number one thing we know about him is that he's a coward? And he runs away from everything. Anyway, somehow Ray wanders off and ends up in this lower level of wherever this is supposed to be and discovers Luke's lightsaber. Then she has this weird, I guess, force vision type thing and gets scared and doesn't want, ever want to touch that lightsaber again, even though she will by the end of this movie. The First Order attacks, and Han and Chewbacca are fighting, and Maz Kanata gives Finn the lightsaber. Meanwhile, Kylo Ren is tracking down Rey. She tries to fight back, but obviously can't for very long, and ends up getting captured. Finally, around this time, we get to see Leia and C-3PO, although Leia hasn't aged very well. Still, it's nice to see her. Finally, we're nearing the end of this movie, and I didn't really realize it at first, but a lot of things in this movie feel like they've been taken from episode 4. So the First Order has built something called Starkiller Base, which they use to blow up like five planets and wipe out the New Republic. Wow, we really are back to episode 4 again. Not just with the similarities of Starkiller Base to the Death Star, but also in the sense of how much progress the galaxy has made as a whole. We're right back to the dictatorship, the First Order, having the advantage. The Republic destroyed, 
and the rebels, or in this case the resistance, fighting desperately against them. There are two things left that bug me. One, Ray is imprisoned in that same interrogation type room Poe was in, while Kylo Ren tries to extract the information about the map to Luke Skywalker from her brain, but fails because a guy strong enough to stop blaster fire with the force should fail at something like that, and makes himself look like a total idiot in front of Palpatine 2.0. While he's away doing that, she's stuck there, and she gets the brilliant idea, I'm assuming by herself, to force persuade the guard that's looking after her to simply let her go. Up until now, we've had no knowledge of her being Force-sensitive whatsoever outside of the one Force vision thing she had. Aren't Jedis supposed to have training to use Force powers like that? The first time we saw that, Obi-Wan used it, and we can assume he's Jedi Master level. And the second time, it was with Luke. But that was after he had already got training from Obi-Wan and Yoda. But I guess that doesn't matter anymore. Whoever can use whatever ability they want, regardless of training, it does not matter. After that, we get the confrontation between Han Solo and Kylo. Kylo is Han's son. So there's all that drama, and it's a character I don't respect and can't relate to at all. Killing off one of the greatest Star Wars characters, and it's just sad. It's sad for more than just that Han Solo is gone now. It's sad that they sent him off like that. Kylo Ren is not even close to being half as good a character as Han Solo was. Yet he is the one who gets to kill him. I would have rather Boba Fett come out of nowhere and shoot Han and Kylo. That would have made this movie 20 times more enjoyable for me. After I left the movie theater the first time, I was just confused at what I just saw. It all boils down to a firm disappointment. Yet I was really excited for the second movie to finally be able to see Luke again.